Hey, Shalom, Shalom, brothers. All right, before I begin this lesson tonight, I want to give all praises, all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Also, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth and rule and teach well. And as always, peace, love, many blessings unto the elect. All right, this your brother Itazawam coming back with the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim uh with the uh, Day of Atonement lesson tonight, dealing with grace, mercy, and favor. Um, you know, and um, you know, it's very important for us to understand that aspect of the truth, okay? Because yes, we have faith on our end. With faith is belief, belief salakia, um, and Yahweh Bashim Shai. All right, like it tells us in the book of uh, Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. Okay, the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so we, we hope in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai because we believe in these words, but yet having not seen them. Okay, so that's our end of the of the deal is to to maintain faith in the Lord. But technically speaking, salvation is through first and foremost through the mercy and grace of the Lord. Because if the Lord had not opened up the mercy for us to enter into eternal life then what is faith without that grace so i just wanted to go into this tonight especially considering the fact that we are in the day of atonement which this is a good time to bridge that gap uh between you know you yourself and yahweh bashim al shot okay because we separated we were separated uh from the lord through our iniquities and through our transgressions but now through that mercy the lord is allowing us a way back to be reconciled with him before all hell break loose. So a good way to do that is to seek the mercy and the favor of the Lord. Okay? So that way you're parting from all the destruction that's getting ready to come upon the earth. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start with this scripture. Lord willing, this is a uh, edifying lesson. Okay? Uh, this is the uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that's straight to the point. So it's the grace in which we'll be delivered. The Lord's grace and mercy is going to be bestowed upon uh, the elect uh, men, women, and children. But those that are going to be given that grace are going to be those that are in obedience. It, just, it ain't just going to be any nigga or nigga woman uh, that know the truth but still do whatever the hell they want to do and be talking shit, you know, and uh, uh, bullshit and teaching the things that they ought not teach. Uh, um, you know, doing doing all manner of evil and wickedness, but then, you know, uh, uh, act like they uh, are doing the right thing. See, the Lord is, is not going to have that mercy and that favor upon those rebellious Israelites. As a matter of fact, let me get this, um, this word grace real quick to get a little more in-depth focus on that understanding. All right, and that, 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 that word right there, that's a, um, a Greek word. Okay, yeah, that's a Greek word. All right, let's read it. Look like it says karese. Strong's G, 5485, charis. Charis. Okay, charis. Right, so it says, the definition reads grace. That which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech. So, the grace of the Lord is, is is what affords us, you know, uh, the joy. Us doing the things that, that pleases the Lord is what is going to allow him to have mercy and, and, and grace upon us. And when you read the scriptures, you can see what your duties are to where you can actually uh, uh, please the Lord. Okay? When you go through the scriptures, it tells you exactly what to do. In order to get into the good graces of the Lord, you got to be obedient, do the work, all right. Go, uh, um, pray, fast, read, study, be in order. Don't be rebellious, you know, to the orders that's being established in the churches. You know, if you're a, a, a sister, don't be rebellious to your husband. Talk, talking back, talking shit. Okay, these are all the things that are, that that's going to afford you the grace that you're looking for. Okay, anything else outside of that. You're going you gonna, to you gonna find some serious stuff real soon coming down the pipe because Esau ain't playing. Okay? There was a um, a storm that came through the Midwest yesterday. It was a lightning storm. But the people up in Ohio and Detroit, they said that the lightning was so loud that it, it, sounded, it sounded like nuclear bombs was going on. 
okay? So if you can see what's going on in the earth, these plagues are, are, are not slowing down. They're increasing. You see what just happened in Hawaii. You see what just happened up in Canada with those wildfires. Now they're going back into a second stage of uh, shutdowns and lockdowns, okay? So the Lord is going to increase the plagues because why? The Lord sent the prophets out there during that whole pandemic situation. And what happened? You people still didn't get the memo. You're still not looking for the grace and the favor of the Lord in which you need it, tremendously need it. We all need it, okay? So it says, it says goodwill, loving kindness, favor of merciful kindness by which the Most High exerting his holy influence upon souls. So when you do what's right by Yahweh Bashim Shai, then the Lord exerts a holy influence upon your spirit to, to that so that you can continue to do those things that's right. Okay? So that's why it's important to be in order and to walk in the spirit so that the Lord's influence can be upon you. Remember the scriptures say that wisdom cannot dwell in a malicious soul. So if you have malicious intent in your spirit, the Lord's spirit is not going to dwell with you. And his, he's not going to exert his holy influence upon your soul. Satan is. And Satan is going to lead you right to that good, glittering, fat, old-fashioned sword that he getting ready to swing. A lot of you jakes is going to die real soon, man. Okay? And we've been saying this for years, and it sounds redundant like a broken record. But a lot of Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are about to lose their life in a very, very miserable way. And we hope that we don't. Because we don't even know. We, we have no idea. And we've been doing the work. Okay? Even those that have done the work, when you read the scriptures, it speaks about those that will be beheaded for the witness of the testimony of Yahweh Shai. It speaks about those that are going to lose their life in the coming times that are actually men of the Lord. So we still don't even know if, 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 you know, if we're going to make it to, you know, the finish line, man. That's why we pray for the mercy and the grace of the Lord. All right, so let's go back to the scriptures. And that's how you break the scriptures down. Even though that was a little piece of the, a part of the scriptures, you got to go, go deeper to give the sense. So I'm going to read it again, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace, which we just read what grace was, okay, are ye saved? That's the initial uh, tier, the first tier of salvation is that the Lord's mercy is going to be extended unto you. And then if the Lord is going to extend that mercy unto you, on your end of the deal, you have to believe. Okay? You have to believe on Yahweh Bashem Shai. You got to listen to his prophets, his men. You got to do everything that the scriptures tell you to do to the best of your ability. Okay? that's a, These are acts of faith that's going to lead you into that grace. All right, it says, and that not of yourselves, meaning none of this is of ourselves. Just as we could cut on this red button and, 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 and speak, it could be taken away from us. Because this is not our message. This is the Lord's message, and we are the Lord's messengers. And if you continue to rebel, the Lord takes that away from you. This truth can be taken away, man. That's why we got to pray for that mercy and that grace and that favor. Mercy in the Hebrew is chassad all right chassad all right um i believe um um grace is the same thing if i'm not mistaken or it might be chanak is is one of those um but mercy and mercy and grace you need it okay you know i send my prayers up every day i ask the lord for the lord's mercy you know chasadka that's how you say, when you put the ka at the end, it, it, it makes it uh, your. All right, your mercy. Okay, nathanliya chasad ka mayan chataya, chatayam ya, which means my Yahweh uh, Bashima was shy, nathanliya, which is give to me chasad ka, your mercy or your grace, mayan from chatayam uh, which is my sins you know if you ain't praying asking the Lord to forgive you for your sins every day you you behind the curve okay Yahweh Shai gave us the blueprint on what to do alright let's go to the next scripture showing you instances in the scriptures 
where Yahweh Bashima was shot actually had mercy upon us as a nation, and he did wonderful works for us because that grace was allotted unto us. This is Exodus 12 and 35, and this is, you know, you go into the whole Passover situation in Exodus the 12th chapter. But nonetheless, it reads, And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. See, Moses was being established as one of the pillars of Israel during that time. And Israel had to listen to Moses. So when they listened to Moses, they found that favor in the Lord. They couldn't just do whatever the hell they wanted to do. The Lord had set Moses up, and they had to follow what Moses said, dude, because the Holy Spirit was with Moses. So it's the same thing in these latter times. You have men of the Lord that's being established throughout the four corners of the earth, and whom Yahweh Bashima was shy is pouring a, a heavy portion of his spirit on, and you got to listen to those men. That's why they're doing the things that they're doing on the highways and byways. Okay? See, this world uh, uh, pushes out this feeble mentality that you could do whatever the hell you want to do without any repercussions um, or, or uh, consequences. Okay? But in order, in order for you to avoid those consequences, you got to listen. And the Lord established people in the earth, primarily men, and he's given them, doused them with his Holy Spirit to tell you the right things to do. Okay? So that you can find favor in the Lord. The Lord's not going to come down here talking to every goddamn body. Neither does a president of a company talk to everybody that worked for him. He talked to certain people. They tell you what to do and you got to listen. That's the same thing that's happening now in, in the spirit. But a lot of people can't receive the Lord's prophets. Okay? So it says, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Here's the point, verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Meaning the Lord did wonderful things for the children of Israel in the sight of the Egyptians. And guess what? That favor of the Lord is getting ready to come back upon us as a people in the sight of all these other nations again. Starting with the so-called white race because we're in, the neck, we're in the neck of our enemies. Okay? And the Lord's going to start to show you know, this world, who he, who he's protecting and who he's with. And you rebels, man, you you, you wicked jakes out here, you, you ain't going to get that favor. You're going to be getting steamrolled out here, man. And the Lord's going to have it set up to where it's going to happen. Okay? Because our people have become complete degenerates in rebellion, and all they do is follow after the so-called white man, and they give him all the credence and kudos in the world. But the jakes that's on the highways and byways risking their lives and freedoms to tell you the truth so that you can repent and turn back. You treat them like shit. So that's why the Lord is preparing that sword for you jakes, you men and women that act like that, man. And you children. The Lord ain't going to spare none, man. And we in them times. You see all this commotion that's going on in the earth? It's, it's, it's almost there, man. And once this thing go down, there ain't no turning back. You better get out the Lord's way. All right? He don't have no respect to a person. He'll knock your shit off. So that's why you got to ask the Lord for mercy, favor, and grace. Reading again, Exodus 12 and 36, And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And guess what? That's time is coming again. Who are the modern-day Egyptians, these Americans? And the Lord is going to be providing certain necessities and resources from these Americans and giving it to his people, the elect of his people, might I add, because that's what it's about, the elect. It ain't just about every Jake, all right? Or just because you're a supermodel with a, with a dump, you know, with a you thick, beautiful. The Lord don't care about that. The Lord don't care if you got a six-pack. And that you got a 40 inch vertical. The Lord is looking for those that are obedient. The elect. The elect are the only ones that's going to walk in that obedience, man. And hold themselves to that, 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 uh, that degree of um, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Everybody else, they just going to do whatever they, the hell they're going to do until Esau rolls. Okay? So we'll look for the favor and the grace. This is Lamentations chapter 3. And, um, I'm going to start at verse uh, 22, right to the point. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, 
It's not it's not because of us. It's not because of Martin Luther King rose up and, and got us got Jake to march and get their ass whooped on that white bridge in Selma, Alabama. That that was to no fucking avail. You know? They think they hit some pivotal uh, milestone by marching on the bridge, but when you do a recap, all you see is goddamn fire hydrants and German shepherds tearing Jake ass up. So how in the hell did Jake overcome? They didn't overcome. It was because the Lord didn't allow the so-called white man to consume us. And trust me, that's on his agenda. But it's the Lord's mercy. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me get this quick scripture real quick. To prove that point in the book of Isaiah. And then we'll jump back to that scripture. Isaiah 1. <clears throat> go down to verse 9 man. Alright it reads right here. Except the Lord of hosts. Had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So it's really the Lord having mercy upon the elect. That he didn't allow these other nations to consume us. That's why the elect is going to be established over the whole house of Israel. And they're going to be responsible for bringing back the two thirds and all the, 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 the rebel Israelites, man. Because they're the ones that's actually following the, the voice, the good shepherd, Yahweh Shah. Okay. And he's leading us back to the father. We're making that reconciliation. We would that atonement. The atonement has already been made. Yahweh Shah is the atonement. And, 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 and through that atonement, the elect is being reconciled back to the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shah from the obedience of the scriptures. So it's the Lord's mercies, first and foremost, that we're not consumed. Okay? It says, because his compassions fail not. The Lord is very compassionate and understanding. So to get the Lord to this point that he's about to get to, it really shows the level of disrespect and rebellion in the earth. All you got to do really is look on social media. Every single day, every single day, there's rebellion going on against the ways of the Lord. Every day. The gender wars on, on social media is tiring and pointless. Everybody think they saying something, they ain't saying nothing. Women are getting, women are just complete, they just completely hate men. But need them for every fucking thing. Men is, 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 is turning faggots and homosexuals. Okay. Killing and killing their kids. Doing all kind of drugs, slanging drugs, killing each other. Women are harlots and sluts and hoes. And then they're condoning it. Okay. This is the type of activity that's going on on earth. Where is the elderly aged woman at? rebuking and condemning this type of behavior nowhere they're 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 encouraging it they're telling these these young women live their best life be delusional be toxic but if you go into the, into the scriptures the righteous women back in the day they would cuss cuss the, or some of the good ways well, cuss these goddamn women out they're going to show you how evil this world has gotten so to get the Lord to the point to where he's getting ready to bring this level of wrath, considering the fact that his compassions fail not, it's because you people are fucking up. Okay? It's because your black asses, Hispanic and Native American asses, ain't trying to get right with your how about your mouth shot. After all this shit that just happened recently with the whole shutdowns and the... Uh, uh, you know, the whole situation that happened, you would think that we would have found, uh, Jake would have found some type of logical, you know, uh, reason to, to seek the face of the Lord. And yet, we get worse. But the elect is getting better. Like the scriptures say, the tabernacle of David shall wax stronger and stronger. And when you look at brothers and you look at their, their spirits and you look at their, um, you listen to their lessons and their speech patterns, and that dedication and the love that they have is growing. It's increasing. We adding fruit to the body, and we ain't, and nothing is stopping us because it's the Lord mercy that's continuing to fill us up, and He's 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 the one that's acting upon our soul and destiny, man.
And Lord willing, he continues to do that. All right. It says, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Okay. This is King David. Uh, no, Salaki. This is Jeremiah. Okay. Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations. Okay. And he's talking about um, the compassion that the Lord has had upon us as a people. If you think about all the things that we've done to our power, but we still have an opportunity to be delivered, that's nothing short of the grace and mercy of the Lord. And pray for it. Ask for it, man. Okay? Because the Lord will give it. But in return, you 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 can't just, the scripture speak about it. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. In the book of the, uh, where is that? I haven't read that in so long. I believe it's Ephesians 4 and 30. Let's see if I'm on point. Well, yeah, that's that's a good one. Ephesians 4 and 30. All right, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Or frustrating the grace. Okay? You don't want to frustrate the grace, man. Where you're doing things that you know you're not supposed to be doing, but you continue to do it because you're a rebel. Let me see if I can find it. You don't want to do that. You don't want to frustrate the grace of the Most High. You want to ask the Lord to have mercy and grace upon you and then be obedient to the best of your ability. This is Galatians 2 and 21. I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. Yeah, because just because the Lord is having mercy and grace upon us don't mean you take your big back ass out there and eat pork like you Christians do. You wide back Christians. And even opened up the Bibles or, or the hymn books in the back of the damn uh, chairs. But, but then you slam the whole uh, rack of baby backs after that uh, poor sermon. Okay? It says, I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. For if righteousness come by the law, then Hamashiach is dead in vain. So righteousness don't come by the law. Okay? Meaning you had the scribes and the Pharisees, they was trying to promote uh, keeping the law 100% as if that was going to give you uh, access to the kingdom of heaven. But it was really the be obedience in your how about you know, was shy. So don't, 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 don't be walking around frustrating the grace. Mend your relationship with the Lord. Okay? We have the opportunity every day we wake up to make things better between yourself and your how about you know, was shy. Just as his mercy is new every morning, so should your drive be to, to, to serve the Lord and to do right for the Lord and be in order. Because when Yahweh Shah come back, he's coming back to put the earth in order. So it's best to go ahead and, 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 and set yourself up and be in order before he comes back. Rather than you having to wait for the second go around, you got to eat a missile to come back and get in order. Because everything is still going to get put in obedience. So why not submit now? And men that men that relationship, we have the tools and the structure written in the scriptures. All right. This is the book of Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. And sin separates you from the Most High because the Lord don't look upon sin. So when you sin, the Lord turns his face on you. Okay. The Lord can't look upon sin. It, tells, it, it actually speaks about that in the book of Isaiah, the 59th chapter. It said, because of your iniquity, your iniquities have separated yourself from the Lord, and for your sins he have turned his he have hid his face from you. But when when you do good, the Lord looks upon you and he shines his face upon you, and that glory and that light of the Lord it 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 it, it, it shapes and molds your spirit. This is this is real stuff that we're dealing with. That's why you look at Jake. Jake be having them dark ass countenances. You know what I'm saying? Just complete. Gone because the, the, the Lord ain't with him. You know? Now it says here, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace. See, we're not justified by faith. I'm sorry. Excuse me. We're not justified by the law. We're going to be justified by faith. Okay? Through grace. Okay? And and why what what reason would we need to be justified? Um uh, if we weren't found guilty for something. 
If we were perfect, why would we need to be justified? Okay? If you never broke a law, why would you be in court? If you never did anything wrong, why would you have to go before a judge to be justified of a crime that you never committed? So the simple fact that we need to be justified tells us alone that we've transgressed and we've fallen short. Okay? Because we need justification. Just, and what do we need to be justified from? Sin. Because sin is the wages of death. But we're looking to escape death and inherit eternal life through what? Salvation, man. And salvation is going to come through the Lord having grace. That's how we're going to be justified. And Yahweh Shai is the one that's pleading the cause for the elect to the Most High. Before the Most High open up the, uh, all destruction, you got Yahweh Shai and the angels. They're going before the throne of the Most High, justifying the brothers and the sisters, the few sisters, all right, that are truly believing. Okay? That are truly turning back. And Yahweh Shai is pleading the case. For this, for this group of people before the Most High. And the Most High is actually going to come, uh, authorize the protection of the elect. Okay? Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shah HaMashiach because we were redeemed by the blood of Yahweh Shah, by the shedding of the blood. It covered, you know, it covered us. So that's how we that's how we got the redemption through Yahweh Shai. Okay? So last scripture before I close out, get ready to take it in. This is um the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, dealing more with mercy and how the Lord issues out judgment. He's a very, very careful judge. And, he, and you have to think he's the he's the he's at the pinnacle, he's at the height or the pinnacle of existence. No, nothing is above the Lord's head. Nothing is above the Most High. Okay? The Lord is at the height of all existence. So, and he's He's carrying out judgments on the earth that, that's 100% accurate. The Lord has never made a mistake in judgment. Okay? They're going to show you how powerful he is. Even in the times to come, it's not going to be a, oops, my bad, I didn't mean to get him. Everything is going to go out exactly how the Lord wants it to go out. And the Lord's not going to miss a single judgment, whether it's going to be for destruction or whether it's going to be for salvation. The chariots ain't going to leave nobody. I have to turn around and go back. I forgot to get this one, Lord. I didn't see him. No, Ed, the Lord is perfect, man. And that goes to show you how powerful you have to be to judge billion, 8 billion people accurately. You have Esau came, you know, judge a, a normal case. <laughs> you know, nigga be fucking up, you know, don't know the law. But the most high is judging the whole planet Earth in righteousness and in 100% in accuracy. So this is real quick. This is how the this is how the Lord divvies out uh judgment. Alright, this is it says um um I'm gonna just get right to the point. Wasn't the Solomon 12 and 20? But if thou didst punish the enemies of thy children and the condemned to death with such deliberation, giving them time and place whereby they might be delivered from their malice, going into the other nations. Okay, they the enemy uh, uh, of, of us, uh, of the children of Israelite. Okay, the children of Israel. All right, but he he he, he condemned them, but he say with he he say he judged them carefully. Verse twenty one: With how great circumspection. Did thou judge thy own sons? All right, the Israelites. So if the Lord judges the enemies with such deliberation, then how greater does the Lord judge his own children? That's how you know the things that happen are predestined. It says, unto whose fathers thou hast sworn, going to the promises with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and made covenants of good promises. Verse 22, therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, yes, we do face chastisement because we, we, we go off. We're in this flesh. We slip. So when we slip, the Lord chastises us. The Lord get on our ass. But just because he chastises you don't mean that 
He's casting you off. He's he's correcting you. Okay? He's correcting you about your behavior, something that you might have did that he was that he wasn't pleased with. So he sent the judgment out to chasten you so you can correct that behavior, not to destroy you. See, what the problem with this world that we're living in is people don't take chastisement how they're supposed to take chastisement, especially women. Okay? They don't know how to take the chastisement. They feel that they, 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 they immediately play the victim card. So therefore, it doesn't leave room for accountability. It leaves room for deflecting. And that's why the world's in complete shambles, especially in it is under the so-called white man. He's the king of it. He's the king of, of, of not knowing how to take chastisement, man, and deflecting. That's why our women act like that, because they got the spirit of, of Esau on them. Okay? It says, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more. So if he chastises us, he said he going he scourge our enemies a thousand times more than the little chastisement that we get. To the intent that when we judge, okay, you know, us brothers that's that 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 go into the scriptures and that understand the scriptures, understand the judgment. So so when we get chastised, we gotta remember well if I'm going through it, it's a heathen out here goddamn with a foot growing out his goddamn chest. Okay? Well, he got his brother toes. You know, there was a Siamese twin, but he got his brother toes growing off his kneecap. But, you know, we, we might run out of gas. You see? And you might, you know, go through some, you know, financial troubles here and there. But it's a heathen somewhere out here with with, with a, a goddamn, with, with five kneecaps. Okay? It says, when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. So even when we're going through certain things, you can feel like, man, the Lord is on my ass, man. In the midst of these judgments, we should look for mercy because we understand that the Lord's compassions fail not. That his grace and mercy endure forever. So pray for mercy and grace and favor. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close out. Lord, willing, that was edifying to the elect. Men, women, and children, giving all praises, all glory and honor. To Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Kakodash. A double honors once more to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, many blessings to the elect. Shalom.